Okay, 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 okay. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this setup looks pretty good. Hey everyone, Ollie here. So in this video, I wanted to cover how much I spend in a month. Um, I've seen other videos like this, so I thought I'd do a video like this because I've had a few requests in the past, people requesting how much I spend, because I've said in the past as well that I live, I like to think I live quite below my means. Um, I like to think of myself as someone who doesn't overspend, but then I do. I do like buying nice things as well though, <laughs> especially when it comes to cars and things like that. But anyway, um, how much I spend in a month. I actually first wanted to cover how do I make money. I know quite a few of you will be new to the channel. How do I actually make money? So I make money mainly online to be honest. So I make money through YouTube. Uh, I make videos and stuff on this channel and on my tech channel. My tech channel is my first sort of main channel. Um, digital products. So I sell uh, wallpapers, uh, ebooks, other sort of digital products, guides and things like that. Affiliate marketing, naturally, affiliate marketing I think goes hand in hand with sort of tech stuff and finance stuff and whatever else. Um, so that's a good way to make money. I also share sort of Skillshare classes. I teach on Skillshare, I have a few classes on there, make me a few thousand dollars a year. Um, that's pretty good. And then I have the big one, the ULX, uh, where I share products that I've actually designed. I get them made in China and then I bring them over here in bulk, I buy them in bulk and then I sell them online. Um, and then I do client work. Client work doesn't actually make up an absolute ton of my money, um, mainly because I'm very picky about client work. I don't just accept anything and everything. So yeah, client work. When it comes to client work, I mainly do design work, web development work, web design work, that sort of stuff, and some branding work. Um, I have started taking on more sort of media work, sort of like content creation for companies and things, because I found that's actually quite a good way to make money. And you know, if you make, say like an Instagram reel or a YouTube video or something or some just some sort of video or something for a client, you can charge very good money for that. And if you do quite well, I found it to be quite a good thing because it can you can basically get repeat customers. It's a good way to get repeat customers. Um, so that's how I make money. I did a video on how much I made in the last year. If you haven't already seen that, I have a video that I published in January. And yeah, last year I made, it still amazes me when I look at this figure. I made over $800,000 last year through my businesses. Now, of course, not all of it is profit. Not all of it is money I take home and that's in my bank account. There's always sort of taxes, fees, things I've got to pay for, people I've got to pay for, stuff like that. Um, but I actually purposely, I feel like people find this probably crazy. I purposely try and spend as much of it as I can <laughs> because that is the whole point of tax. That's why we have tax. Tax is supposed to sort of drive you spending your money. You know, so I try and spend it on employees, I try and spend it on gear, I try and invest it into my business, anything that can help me make more money basically. So yeah, I try and just grow the business. So I try and put that money into the business. So how much I pay myself can actually vary. So I don't know what I'm actually gonna put in the title. I might put like 100,000 or 200,000, something like that. So how much I actually pay myself can vary so much, mainly because I pay myself whenever I need the money. Like <laughs> I don't really have like a set, um, well I do have a set minimum, but I don't have a set maximum of how much I pay myself. So in the UK, there are various tax efficient ways to pay yourself, especially if you own your own company like I do. So I think the point at which it's the most tax efficient for a company director like myself is around 43,000 and that is a mix of dividend and salary. Um, that's after corporation tax has also been paid. So you've already paid 20% on your profits, um, on your business, and then you get sort of pay yourself. So take home would be around 40,000 because you've also got to pay national insurance and you've got to pay a little bit of tax. So that is the minimum I take every year, 40,000. That is the minimum I take um, because it's the most tax efficient and it's what my accountant tells me to take. So <laughs> I listen to my accountant, he knows more about taxes and, and everything and how to stay above board. So I listen to him. That is the minimum I take. Now, of course, I do take more if I need to. can be for various different things. Um, but like I said, I try to keep my expenses quite low. So let's actually get into my expenses and go through what I spent in a month. Um, I actually share quite a lot of these with my partner. So I live with my partner. So all of these amounts that I'm sharing are half of our expenses on top of my own personal expenses. So I've, uh, I've added it all up. So first big one is mortgage. Mortgage is 500 a month. Yeah, my mortgage is pretty low, uh, mainly because I've got a good rate, 
I put down quite a large deposit for my house. Um, and yeah, my mortgage is quite like 500. So yeah, we pay a thousand altogether. My half is 500. Um, electricity and gas is 125 a month. And that actually used to be so much cheaper. It used to be like 40 or 50 a month. But of course, in the UK, with the rise of electricity and gas prices, it's just shot right through the roof. So that's something to be concerned about because it's only going to keep going up. So I'm definitely concerned about that. 125 a month. Um, yeah, it's not cheap. Internet is 40 a month. Now, I feel like this is actually the one that's most worth it for me, mainly because I get fiber at home. I get a gig down and 300 up for... 80 a month and then obviously I split that with my partner 40 I pay so that is pretty good I feel like for me that is worth it for other people that might be quite expensive for internet but for me that is well worth it having fast internet especially for everything that I do it's just so worth the money it's it's such a small price to pay for the amount of usage I get out of it um water 15 a month we have tv license in the UK so if we want to watch things like BBC and stuff we have to pay a tv license that's 650 a month home insurance is seven pounds a month Council tax is £150 per month. That's my half. Yeah, my council tax is absurd. It's like over three grand a year. And obviously my half is like 1500 1600 something like that. So it, it, yeah, I sort of calculated it to 150 per month. Groceries. So groceries is obviously my own personal groceries and the groceries that I share with my partner. That's 176 a month. Eating out. So I do like to eat out. I'm not going to lie. I do like <laughs> eating out with friends. That's actually where it mostly goes, just social activities with friends. I like going to restaurants with friends um, and with my partner as well, of course. So that comes out to 285 a month, which to be honest, I don't think it's too bad because I've seen people who will spend that on one meal. And for me, 285 a month, that's like, like a meal a week, maybe two meals a week. So I honestly don't think that is bad. Entertainment, so I love going to the cinema. I went to the cinema like four times last month and I always use the meerkat sort of deals that they have where you can get two for one so it's super cheap to go to the cinema um i love movies naturally so yeah that's only 54 a month which i also don't think is too bad shopping well this is shopping for last month so like clothes or anything else so that comes under that sort of bracket um it's 67 a month and then subscriptions Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify and other sorts of subscriptions like PlayStation Plus even and things like that 60 pounds per month so the total for that is nearly 1500 it comes out to 1485 pounds and 50 pence i've sort of just rounded the figures so it's not down to the absolute penny now these are only my consistent sort of month to month bills i would say it doesn't include random purchases so you know if i'm purchasing clothing or if i'm going on holiday or travel or anything else that might be inconsistent mainly because obviously i'm not buying clothes every month i'm not shopping every week so it's hard for me to sort of account for that and it's why i haven't put it in here but i do like to see it as maybe i think if i average it out it's probably amounting to anywhere between two to five hundred a month um over a year when it comes to sort of like travel holidays clothing and other sort of miscellaneous random things here and there um so yeah my sort of uh how much i spend in a month is around two thousand less than two thousand a month which i don't think is too bad i live just outside london i don't live in the city of london i live just outside um so obviously it's not as expensive and i live very comfortably i think so anyway i live in a detached four bedroom house um i have my own office living room everything kitchen garage all that sort of stuff so yeah like i think for what i'm paying and splitting that with a partner as well, yeah, it's well worth it. I feel like I'm living quite comfortably. The remaining money, any money that I have left over, I, I don't spend it. I actually just plow it all into investments. So whether that's my lifetime ISA or my general investments of investment accounts, I just put all the money in there. And any money in the business, of course, like I said earlier, I invest that into the business itself. I also don't have any debts other than my mortgage. I have no car payments, no credit card debts or anything like that. I do use a credit card, mainly just for building up credit score, but I don't actually have any sort of proper credit card debt that I'm paying off. And my mortgage rate is ridiculously low. It's less than 2%. I think it's like 1.6, 1.7, something like that. I can't remember exactly. And if and when the mortgage rates do go back up, I would probably start paying large chunks of it off just to avoid the higher interest rates. But we'll see because my investment accounts are doing pretty well. So I'd probably take money out of that to pay off my mortgage. Um, but it really depends on how much the interest rates go up for my mortgage. I think if the interest rates go up to like five, six, seven percent, then yeah, it's worth me 
sort of paying off chunks of my mortgage. But if it only goes up to like 2%, 3%, um, I might not. We'll see. I, I've, I usually talk to my accountant about this. <laughs> I usually discuss with him because he's much more experienced than I am. Um, he knows what he's doing. So I usually ask him for advice. I'm also not against debt. I think debt, when used wisely, can actually be very worth it. So for example, if I were renovating my home, I was extending it or something, or I was redoing the kitchen or the bathroom or something like that, I would try and get a low rate loan if possible. And you can get them quite easily from places like Sainsbury's and Asda and other places. Um, as I know, any renovations that I would make to my home would actually exceed the value of the loan plus the interest, um, most likely making me a healthy profit. So that's how I would usually use some sort of debt, some sort of loan. I, I wouldn't really use it for car payments or something like that. I, I try to avoid using loans and debts for things that aren't going to sort of... Um, bring me more value than the loan itself. Um, I, don't, I just don't think it's worth it. I think if, if you can't afford it at the time, um, then, it, then you probably shouldn't buy it anyway. Um, but obviously it really, really depends on so many different factors. That's just, that's just my way of thinking. There's so many other ways to think about it. Like this is just one way of thinking about it. I've said in the past though, that focusing on income growth is actually more important than saving money. I personally think so. Um, which is obviously gonna sound counterintuitive for a lot of people um, because you would think, you know, if you wanna buy something, do something, you have to save the money. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't save money. No, of course, like I think you should save money, but that money will only get you so far, especially with inflation. We've seen in the last year how crazy inflation has been. The value of your money is going down. So, you know, if you're earning 20, 30, 40,000 pounds or whatever, dollars or whatever, and yeah, you're saving 10, 20,000, the value of that is just going down. The cost of living is shooting up and it will only continue to do so. That's not really going to go down and you can only lower your electricity bills, your rent and whatever else by so much. Of course, you could use less electricity, but if those sort of electricity rates and gas rates and whatever else keep going up, you're gonna to have to pay them. Like you have to pay them to live. So I like to think that instead of spending that mental energy and time, because it takes a lot of mental energy and time to save money to sort of penny pinch and try and save wherever you can. I, I just think you're better off trying to make more money, which is exactly what I do. I try and figure out how I can make more money because I know that my time is much better spent making more money. You can always make more money, but there's only so much money you can save. So I've said before, focusing on income growth, I think is more important than trying to save money or trying to keep your bills low. Now, of course, you have to have a good, healthy mix of both. Um, but yeah, don't be so set on trying to think like, oh, I can save a little bit of money there. I can save a little bit of money here. You know, it's, I just don't think it's worth it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Just a quick one. I mean, I hope it's a quick one. <laughs> I don't know how long this is gonna be once I edit it. But yeah, just going through how much I spend in a month. I like to think that I live quite below my means, especially considering how much my business is making, how much I pay myself and stuff. Um, because yeah, um, I just I just don't wanna be crazy with my money. I wanna be sensible with it. Um, and hopefully that just gives you some perspective. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.